Okay, let's explore the stock redemption transaction stipulations. I'll read the scenario to you. Bonnie and Clyde are the only two shareholders in Gateway Corporation. Bonnie owns 60 shares with a basis of 4,500, and Clyde owns the remaining 40 shares with a basis of 15,000. At year end, Gateway is considering different alternatives for redeeming some shares of stock. Evaluate whether each of the following stock redemption transactions will qualify for sale and exchange treatment. All right, so let's look at transaction A first. So transaction A assumes that Gateway redeems 10 of Bonnie shares for 4,500 and Gateway has 32,000 of EEP accumulated earnings and profits at year end and Bonnie is unrelated to Clyde. Okay, so down here we see that Bonnie owns 60% before the redemption. Well, how much afterwards? Well, that's going to be 50%, 6% after the redemption. And does this qualify as a sale or exchange? Answer is going to be no, and if so, how much? And of course, we're going to put that as zero. Okay, let me go through the explanation. Now, Bounty owns 60% before the redemption and 56% after the redemption. And we've calculated that by taking 50 over 90. Okay, 50 over 90. Thus, the redemption will fail the 50% test in section 302b2. Because Bonnie still has control, of the corporation after the redemption, right? She has more than 50%. The redemption will likely fail the not, uh, excuse me, fail the not essentially equivalent to a dividend test under section 302b1. Okay, next let's look at requirement B. Now requirement B says Gateway redeems 38% of body shares for $9,000. Gateway has 32,000 of EEP at year end, and Bonnie is unrelated to Clyde. Okay, now in this case, Bonnie owns 60% before, but she'll own 30% afterwards. And how do we come up with that? We take 22 divided by 62. Okay, so 22 divided by 62. And in addition, Bonnie's share of the outstanding stock after the redemption has dropped by more than 80%, right? Um, so 80% times 60% equals 48% of her percentage ownership before the redemption, right? That's 60% before and 35% shares or 35% afterwards. Thus, in this situation, the redemption passes both the 50% test and the 80% test in section 302b2. This means that Bonnie will treat her redeemed shares as though she sold them for $9,000, resulting in a capital gain of $6,150. Now, how do we come up with that? That would be 9,000 minus, and then you take 38 divided by 60 times the 4,500. Okay, so 9,000 minus, and then you first have to do the calculation, 38 divided by 60 times 4,500. And when you do that, you'll come up with $6,150. Okay, next we move on to requirement C. Requirement C says Gateway redeems five of Clyde shares for 5,000. Gateway has 32,000 of accumulated earnings and profits, that's EP, at year end, and Clyde is unrelated to Bonnie. So in this case, Clyde owns 40% before and 37% afterwards. Now, how do we come up with 37%? We took 35 divided by 95. However, Clyde's share of the outstanding stock has not dropped by more than 80%. Um, if you think about it, you take 80% times 40%, that equals 32%. And since the ownership percentage would have to be have to be below 32%, and his ownership percentage is 37%. Okay? So for that reason, his share of the stock is not dropped by more than the 80%. Okay? Thus the redemption passes the 50% the 
50% test, but fails the 80% test under section 302B2. So this redemption might still qualify as a redemption not essentially equivalent to a dividend under section 302B1. So Clyde does not have control of the corporation, right? Bonnie does. And he has suffered a significant reduction in his ownership.